Daily Devotion with Pastor Paula for October 8th, 2021 from Psalm chapter 73, Realizing Envy, part one, verse one. Truly God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped. For I was envious of the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. I love the honesty of the psalmist here, who knows that God is a good gift giver, but yet confesses that he was envious when he saw the prosperity of the wicked. He almost fell away from God. The psalmist then continues, with the list of things that the wicked do that kind of made him envious of sorts. Verse four, for they have no pangs until death. Their bodies are fat and sleek. They are not in trouble as others are. They are not stricken like the rest of mankind. Therefore, pride is their necklace. Violence covers them as a garment. Verse 7, their eyes swell out through fatness. Their hearts overflow with follies. They scoff and speak with malice. Lofty, they threaten opposition. They set their mouths against the heavens, and their tongue struts through the earth. Verse 10, therefore his people turn back to them and find no fault in them. And they say, how can God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the wicked, always at ease. They increase in riches. The wicked increase in which riches and fatness. The wicked may seem to have an easy life here on earth. But as the psalmist notes, God knows the heart even though the wicked don't quite realize it. And they sometimes even wonder, is God really out there because we can do whatever we want to do? There is a struggle within us when we see what the wicked believe and what they do. Why do we have that struggle? Because of the attachment we have to the things of this world. We're like, why can't I have more of this stuff? But notice what the psalmist then continues in verse 13. All in vain have I kept my heart clean and washed my hands in innocence. For all the day I have been stricken and rebuked every morning. If I had said, I will speak thus, I would have betrayed the generations of your children. The psalmist notes that he has kept a, a clean heart and hands. But it seems that the wicked have prospered. So did the psalmist do this in vain? That's part of the thinking. But then the psalmist catches himself and says, I would have betrayed the children of the previous generations of believers if I actually believed that. So what causes the psalmist to realize is his air of envy, so to speak? Verse 16. But when I thought how to understand this, it seemed to me a wearisome task until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then I discerned their end. The psalmist says he would not have been able to understand until he went to the sanctuary of God, that is the church, where God's word is proclaimed. And then, and only then, did the, the psalmist discern the end of the wicked and that the psalmist realizes that they're going to hell. And then it makes sense to the psalmist. Why does he keep his hands clean? Why does he keep his heart clean? Because he also does not want to join the wickeds in hell. A few moments of luxury compared to the in eternity spent in misery. The psalmist now realizes it's not worth it for us as Christians. There are a couple of things for us to consider. 
How do we not attach ourselves to the things of this world when our own sinful nature wants to be attached to the things of this world? We see the prosperity of the wicked and we're like, why can't I have some of that? The psalmist gives us direction. When we go to church and we hear God's word being proclaimed, you see, nowhere else in the world are we going to hear God's word except in the place where God promises to be. So not only do we have to try to keep our hands clean and our hearts clean, as the psalmist noted above, but we also need to return to hear God's word, to hear that precious word that changed the psalmist's heart and can also change our heart so that we're not coveting the things of the wicked, but cherishing the forgiveness that God alone brings. So yes, the psalmist does make his confession. He confesses he was envious. He confesses he gave in to, you could say, the commandments of you shouldn't covet. He was coveting. But God's word turned him back and he confessed his sins. Join me again tomorrow as we continue this psalm. God's peace and many blessings be with you. And thank you for listening. And please take an opportunity to share this message with others. If you have enjoyed these daily devotions, please consider making a donation to Peace Lutheran Church, 24024 West Main Street, Plainfield, Illinois, 60544. Thank you again for listening.